So oh, something just as good. All right. So just as a reminder for maybe Jordan, I wonder if Jordan's watching this or anybody. So um, oh, we asked if somebody else was watching this and they never answered. So I guess they didn't watch it. That must be it. So um, the test tomorrow, or te okay, so we're going to cover chapter 12 today. We're going to cover chapter 15 on Monday in our regular classroom, and it's on video. And Tuesday, we're going to do a review back in the library, and then Wednesday is the written test, okay? Written test will be in our regular classroom on Wednesday. The computer test will be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday in the testing center. Take it whenever you want. Tuesday will be the free day after our after the review. If you take it Thursday, make sure you know what time they close and be there at least two hours early before they close, or you'll only get five minutes to take your test. Okay? Or even worse. So um don't don't miss the test. So anyway, that's that's uh, that's been recorded now. So, um, all right, chapter twelve. Okay, this is actually the fun chapter. Not that they all haven't been fun, but this one's more fun. Chapter twelve, when we're going to talk about probability rules. Now. The funny thing about it is when um, people find out that I teach statistics, I usually get a guy or two that'll be like, hey, you can help me with my fantasy football team or basketball or baseball or whatever. And I don't do any better than anybody else. I wish I did. <laughs> but um, anyway, so let's talk a little bit about probability. I will tell you that I much prefer statistics to probability, but you need to know a little bit of probability. The idea behind probability is we use it to try to predict an outcome. Okay? And Blaise Pascal was one of the first mathematicians to study probability. And the reason why he studied probability, to be honest, statistics is one of the newest forms of math out there. You'll find like calculus was discovered in the 1600s hasn't really changed too much since then. Probability was more the 1800s, and there's even new stuff being developed today. Some of the stuff that I studied in graduate school was, was literally only decades old. So um, there, there's actually a lot of new stuff being discovered in, in, in statistics and probability. But the idea with probability was they had these gamblers, and they couldn't figure out why they weren't winning. And they said, Blaze, can you tell us why we're not winning? What are we doing wrong? Okay, and so he, so a lot of the applications of probability are going to be gambling because they're the easiest to think of. And uh, anyway, so probability is a number between zero and one that describes the proportion of times an outcome occurs. Okay? And we have three main types. I need to turn off the light so this looks better on the video, I think. First one never helps that much. The problem is, I don't know, I don't know what else I can do. It helps with one side of the board, but the next one I do will turn out all the lights, right? I said that describes the proportion. I don't want to do that. Let me see something here. Yeah, I knew that would happen. 
<laughs> well, it's better just to come to class. I know there's a glare on there, but I can't do anything about it. All right, so there are three types. Okay. Theoretical, also known as classical. Empirical, and my favorite, personal. Okay, so I'm going to pick on uh, Mr. Simpkins. I can't remember your first name for some reason. Chandler. Chandler. Who's your favorite team? Basketball. Whatever you pick the sport. Jazz. The jazz. Yeah. I'm a jazz fan too. So, what's the probability that the Jazz win the NBA championship next year? Very small. What'd you say? Very small. Very small. Give me a number between zero and one, or a percentage. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Okay. Alex, who's your team? Uh, the Packers. The Packers. What's the probability they win the Super Bowl next year? 5%. 5%. Oh, that's even worse than the Jets. Sandra, do you got a team? This is the state Mexican soccer selection. Mexican yeah. soccer? Yeah. What, I the, mean, when, Mexican selection. I don't know what's the name. Well, let's just go with the World Cup then. Yeah. Okay, we just had the World Cup, so we're not going to ask about the women's. But the men's World Cup, what's the probability Mexico wins the men's World Cup? 60 percent yeah. Ooh, that's because pretty because they always like it too close and they look wow. yeah. <laughs> okay so chandler how did you come up with that 20 percent number did you guess you just made it up and uh alex basically made it up and just made it up yeah too. exactly that's what a personal probability it's made you can make it up <laughs> okay now, it doesn't have to be based on facts. I always love it when I get somebody that says 100%, and I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. Now, you know, the Cleveland Browns, I've been picking on them for years. They're actually better than they used to be. But I would, or the Raiders, they were terrible too. I would always joke and I would say, you know, it, you, a lot of times you want to pick a negative number, but it can't be negative. Okay? Um, so at any rate, it's always a number between zero and one. Can't be negative, can't be greater than one or 100%. So, um, so in personal, that's probably what you guys are all familiar, most familiar with. You guys were all reasonable. I don't know, 5% is pretty low though. Dude, Rogers is like made of glass lately. <laughs> he gets hurt like every time he steps on the field. Yeah, yeah. So, my team's the Patriots, by the way. Yeah. So, and I want to. I, I should wear my Patriot jersey when I teach this class. You know, you know, Martellus Bennett. I've got his jersey because he's a Bennett, right? <laughs> he would have caught the Super Bowl winning pass if for that pass interference call. I got it on the next play, but still. <laughs> so anyway. All right, so let's talk a little bit about theoretical and empirical. So theoretical, okay, let me do this one. I'm going to pick a nice easy one. Bettina, if I were to flip a coin, what's the probability it would come up heads? 50%. How did you get that so quickly? There's two options. I mean, you can only get one out of two, right? Yeah. Assuming it's a fair coin, right? Okay, so you did the theoretical method there, okay? You based it on rules. They're based on rules, okay? Let's talk about another one. Do we get any gambler? Aaron, you look like a gambler. Are you a gambler? Yeah, you go to Vegas? Yeah, Vegas. Oh, you're from Vegas. Oh, so you, oh, I didn't hear that. So you're from Vegas. What's the probability that they draw a king out of a deck of cards? Four out of? Four is greater than one, so it can't be four. How many cards are in a deck? Four out of 52, right? Okay. 
Come on, you got to beg this guy. He's got to be smarter than that, right? Yeah, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the smartest Vegas one. So yeah, four out of fifty-two or one out of thirteen, right? You could simplify the fraction, but four out of fifty-two. There's four kings out of a deck of fifty-two cards. Okay. Now, is there anybody that is not familiar with cards? Okay, well, you're going to have to become familiar because we're going to, there's going to be homework questions that are going to ask you about a deck of cards. My parents wouldn't allow me to play face cards when oh, I was growing up because they were evil. So. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> but only, I only in Utah County yeah. do I hear that. I just know it's Everybody else plays with cards. Anyway. Also in the Baptist country. In Baptist country? Oh, yeah. oh, I haven't taught in Baptist cards country. Are not to be touched. Oh, brother. And, All right. And I just well, so. You know, close your eyes. Don't close your eyes too much as you're doing your homework. My uncle is. We're gonna be doing a lot of card problems. So my, my uncle is a witch. It's the only time I see cards. Your uncle is a witch. Yeah, like um, yeah, like, like how you call it. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Is that what he is? Yeah. Wow. Good. It's the only th well, the only time I've seen cards. Wow. Well, <laughs> I've seen cards. So, go talk to Aaron. He'll he'll hook you up. All right. <laughs> okay, so you know what? I will do this because there are some people who don't know about cards. So in the deck of cards, you have four kings, four queens, four jacks, and then four of the numbers two through ten. Okay? And you also have hearts. Aces. Oh, and you have, and you got four aces. I forgot about that. Okay, which is adds up to fifty-two cards. Now these three are called face cards because they have faces on them: a face of a king, a face of a queen, a face of a jack. Okay. All right. Now you've got uh, hearts. You've got thirteen hearts. You've got thirteen um, clubs. They look like that. Clubs. You have 13 spades. Spades are black. And you got 13, oh, clubs are also black. 13 diamonds. Okay, that's 52 cards. Okay. So the idea is you can have a king of hearts, a king of clubs, a king of spades, a king of diamonds. That's how it works. Okay. All right. Um, Sometimes I have to explain that because I just assume everybody knows it and not everybody does. Okay. All right. So uh, based on rules, that's theoretical. Now, let me ask you, I know this is a terrible question, but I'm going to ask the men first, what's the probability that you are going to get prostate cancer? Don't answer that yet. And for the women, what's the probability you're going to get breast cancer? I don't expect anyone to know the answer. Well, actually, you should know the answer for prostate cancer. Okay? Man, what's the probability you're going to get prostate cancer if something else doesn't kill you first? It's one in four. One in four? It's like almost 100%. Okay? Now, having said that, did I tell you that I, yeah, I told you I became a vegan? I watched this movie called Forks Over Knives on Netflix, and it said that in Japan they only had 18 cases of prostate cancer because nobody there drinks milk. And they believe that milk causes prostate cancer and it also causes broken hips when you get old. I so quit drinking cow, cow's milk and cheese. And wow. So, anyway, you should watch it. It's good. It'll, it'll, it'll turn you into a vegan, or at least it did me, anyway. <laughs> I, I have no moral obligations to eating meat. I just want to lose weight. That's the main thing. And I also don't want prostate cancer. <laughs> okay? Now, women, what's the probability that you're going to get breast cancer? I don't expect you to know the answer, and I don't even know the answer, so I'm not going to go there. But how would you figure that out? There you go. Oh, that's like if you ask questions. Because it's so genetically based, breast cancer, so would there be different? Would you just do all the women? Or would you so you'd take all the women and what? Take a sample. Take a sample and you'd say? And you'd have to make sure the sample 
was equal across um, race and nutrition. And okay, don't get too complicated about me. So how do we find out what's the probability a woman gets breast cancer? Or it works the same way. How do we find out the probability a man gets prostate cancer? I know men have to get tested like once it's on like 30 or something like that. What'd you say? No men have to like get tested. Get tested like, when you turn 30? 30 or 40 oh, I'm on, I, I'd have been dead by then, I think. Yeah. I have never been tested for prostate cancer. Well, I guess maybe I have with the doctor. They recognize like once a year. Anyway, question is how do you find out? What percentage of women are going to get prostate cancer? Get breast cancer, prostate cancer zero. <laughs> you measure how often it happens, right? Okay, so that's what empirical probability is: is you measure how often something happens. Okay, so it's a lot different than a card game, right? Card game, you can figure it out based on rules. With cancer rates, you just have to measure how often it happens. Take 100 women, three of them get breast cancer, it's a 3% chance, or whatever the number is. OK? Does that make sense? All right, so um, all right, let's talk a little bit about empirical models. OK? Let's say that according to the census, this is the probability of a woman 25 to 29 years old is never married. Married, widowed, or divorced. Okay? So we've got status here and we've got probability. Okay? So the never marrieds are 0.503, the marrieds are 0.452. The widows are 0 0.003, and the divorced are 0 0.042. Okay? All right, so now, using this information, find the probability that a woman is not married. Okay? So, Dalton, it must be your turn. Okay. How would you figure it out? Um, are we talking about in the present or ever? According to this table. So, never married. Okay, 0.503. This is the probability of never married. That way. Is that the right answer? It's four to one. So they're not married, right? At whenever the census was taken. Yeah. yeah. No, it must be like plus. We need to add some things on there, right? Yeah. That's what I was saying. Presently. Um. Then plus 0 .003. You're saying the probability that are widowed 0 .003 plus, plus probability of divorce, which is 0 .042. Okay, so that's very good. You already did new stuff before I even taught you. That adds up to 0 .548. Can anybody think of another way to do that that may or may not be easier? Which I uh, married 500. So you, we could do 1 minus the probability that they're married, right? So 1 minus 0. 
0.452 equals 0.548. So either way, I got the right answer, right? Now, we did make an assumption here. Could a woman 25 to 29 be married and widowed and divorced by then? Be unusual, but yeah, they could, right? So we're assuming that the woman only fits into one of these categories, okay? So that assumption that we made is that these are mutually exclusive. Exclusive, meaning only one category, okay? Which is kind of what uh, Dalton was getting at. He said, you mean right now? Yeah, we're, we're assuming that a woman can only be in one category in this case, okay? And it's a good question to ask, okay? So that term that we use is mutually exclusive, okay? Now, some other definitions. Men and women, are those mutually exclusive? Used to be, right? Okay, how about men and Republicans? Are those mutually exclusive? Can you be a man and a Republican? Yeah. Can you be a man and a Democrat? Yeah, so those are not mutually exclusive, okay? Um, so mutually exclusive says they can only be in one category. So we are assuming for the sake of this that um, it can only be in one category. Now let's talk about some other rules here. All right, probability rules. I've given some of these, but this is kind of a summary. Must be between zero and one. Two, all probabilities must add to one. But I am going to add a little thing. This is one of the rules that they aren't really clear on. If independent. Okay? Is this, um, this, is for all this is actually for all kinds of probabilities. Okay? Now, independent. Okay? So I'll give you an example of a case that was not independent. Are these independent here? Do these add up to one? Yes. You can check it yes, here. So they they would fill fill this. So we're we're assuming not only are they mutually exclusive, but they're also independent. They add up to one. Now, I will tell you a case uh, on my master's degree project, a case where the probabilities did not add up to one and they were not independent. Okay. So I was working with a fertility doctor, and we wanted to figure out the probability that a woman would get pregnant based on what day of the month it was, okay? So we took 30 days, 31 days in a month, and we said, okay, if a woman has sex every day, is it guaranteed for a month, let's say, is it guaranteed that she will get pregnant? No, why not? It was only three or four days, but you know, well, yeah, but what else? Fertility. Fertility meaning maybe she's got something wrong, right? Or maybe the man has something wrong. What's that? Something wrong in the plumbing. But even for people who can get pregnant, are they going to get pregnant every time they have sex? No, just because nature does its thing, right? Okay. So, yeah, if you add up all the probabilities of getting pregnant, it will not add up to one because it depends on other things. Um, when, when, when she's ovulating, sometimes it depends on body temperature. You know, just there's a lot of there's a lot of lurking variables we'll say. Okay, so not everything is independent, and we'll talk about some cases of uh, dependent examples later. Okay, 
Um, now, Aaron mentioned what we call the complement rule with an E, not with an I. Complement rule basically says that the probability of an event, I'm going to call E the event complement, put a C there for complement, equals one minus the probability of the event, okay? Which is what he said. He said, well, if you subtract probability somebody's married from one, you can also get the answer, okay? Sometimes the complement rule, and I think it was, we only had to use two numbers here. We had to use three here, right? Okay. Often the complement rule is easier to figure out than the other way. And rule number four, if two events have no outcome in common, meaning mutually exclusive, you can add the probabilities. Let's move the additional. So you probably knew a lot of these, okay? Now, let's talk about how to find uh, probabilities. One way to do that is with the sample space, okay? This is very useful for theoretical models. And you list out all possible outcomes. Okay? Very useful for theoretical, theoretical models. models. List out all possible outcomes. Yes. Okay? Now, I'm not going to ask this one to Aaron because he's, he's a Las Vegas shark, but let's see who I'm going to ask. Cade, what would be the probability that I, the probability that I roll a four, a seven, or a nine? You know that off the top of your head? Two dice. Two dice. You say, no, I don't know that off the top of my head. Hopefully, you don't. One out of 24. One out of 12? We're going to find out and see if you're correct. Okay, that's your guess. Okay? Now, one of the things you didn't do was you didn't list out your sample space. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to do. And I love, I think I'm going to put a, a dice problem on the next test because some of you would rather miss it than write out the sample space and get it right. Okay? I know this is a pain, but to this day, if I have a dice problem, I write out the sample space because I don't want to miss it. Some of you don't care, but I don't want to, okay? So I've got a one on the one, a one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, three, one, three, two, Three, three, four, three, five, three, so six, four, one, four, two. What'd all you say? The, all the possible all ways four. to get the numbers to one. So every possibility. Now you see why you're all so lazy. You don't care. You would be like, I don't care. I'm just going to push this problem. Okay? <laughs> all right. How many possibilities are there? Let's pretend I had a red and a blue die. There's 36 possibilities, right? Okay. Now, to roll a four, I could get a three and a one, a two and a two, or a one and a three. Agree with me? What is the same? Is the question the same question? I'm going to roll a four, a seven, or a nine. Okay. To get a seven, I could get a six, one, five, two, a four, three, three, four, two, five, one, six. And to roll a nine, I could get a six, three, five, four, four, five, 
R36. Do you agree with that? No, even though now, a lot of you are saying, well, the order doesn't matter, does it? And here's what I'm going to say. Sometimes the order matters, sometimes it doesn't. But if you want to be sure and get the problem right, you should pretend that the order always matters and you will always get it. Well, I won't say you'll always get it right, but you'll be more likely to get it right. Okay? Well, yes. In this case, it'll be, yeah, it matters because you said we had two dice, one more, one red. Oh. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. So assume it matters. Sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. Okay? So the answer is, okay, give me the answer of 1 out of 12. I think it's better than 1 out of 12, right? I just have to count up these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13 possibilities out of 36. That is the wrong answer. He guessed way low. It's about one third. That's closer to one third than it is to one twelfth. So you are only off by a factor of four. Okay? What'd you say? I said he said three out of twelve. I didn't hear it. I said he said three out of twelve, but he said one out of twelve, didn't you? He said one out of twelve. Yeah. Okay. All right. So how many of you are going to do this problem off the top of your head on the test? <laughs> Ken's like, I don't care. I'll miss it. I don't care. Oh, I can't pick that up. Never mind. I'll pick it up later. All right. So, um, all right. So this can be very useful for that. Now, how about let's do a different one. No, we'll do one more of those. Oh, I put the same thing twice. Um, oh, actually, let's do this, and this time we're going to pretend the order doesn't matter. Okay? Just to show you, because I think order matters on this one. Okay? So that means I don't, I'm going to cut out all of those, right? Because three one's the same as one three, four one's the same as one four, right? So I don't need any of these. Okay? If I didn't care, so this is the wrong way, by the way, what's the answer I would have gotten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of one, two, three, or go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Which is exactly one third. Is it exactly one third? No, it's 13 out of 36. So, can you see that order matters in this case? Okay, so that's why you should list all the possibilities. Okay, all right, now let's pretend. That, who have they picked on? Philip has three tickets to a concert. Who do you like, Philip? What concert would you like to go to? I don't go to the. Music ones. Yeah. Who's your favorite artist? I can go. I go with any good one. Any good one? Pick one good one. Let me just the uh, country music. Country music? You listen to country? Yeah. I just oh, listen. I'm not going with you. <laughs> you want Clint Black? Uh, best artist might be. I don't know the name. Clint Black, how's that? I don't know. All right. 
Philip has three concerts to the Clint Black concert. I say only country person I can think of. I can't believe you listen to country. That's nasty. All right. So, Chandler, do you like Clint Black? You like country? So, Chandler. Uh, Bettina, do you like country? Bettina. One time I went to a George Strait concert in like 1997. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> you got to pick better music than that, Philip. I don't love it. All right. And uh, let's see here, Alex. Chandler, Bettina, and Alex. Want to go? Heavy metal T-shirt and getting sent to a country concert. <laughs> well, I didn't notice. Okay, we pretend you want to go. I'd rather go to heavy metal, I think, than country. That would be nasty. But when, All right, um, but Philip's going. They're his tickets, so he can only take two people. Okay, so he can only take two. He can only take two friends. I really thought you had better taste in music than that, Philip. Okay. So what is the sample space? Sandra, can you help me with the, the uh, oh, it's ABC. Who knew I did that? I just noticed that. This will be easy. This will be easier than I thought. Okay, what is what is the sample space? You can only take two people. Because Philip's going. What's the sample space? Who can who can he take? Three. No, he can only take two people. Because oh, he's he's going okay. for sure. Um Bettina and Alex. Bettina and Alex. What else? And Chandler. Chandler and, and Alex. And Alex. And Bettina. Tina and Chandler. What else did I tell you? Oh, we need four people to go. We, it would be better if we had four people. Chandler, Bettina, Alex, and uh, James. Do you like country? Yeah, sure. Oh, yes. you do? Yeah. Sure. James. <laughs> there. We're, we're going to make this a little easier. So he's got four tickets. Four tickets, you can take three friends. Okay? So let's do this again. What is the sample space? So he has to take three. He's got four tickets. He's going, so he's got three friends. Yeah. So Chandler, Bettina, and Alex. Chandler, Bettina, and Alex. James, Alex, Bettina. James, Alex, Bettina. And you know what you should really do? You should do this Chandler, orderly. Chandler, Alex, and James. Oh, sorry. So Chandler, Bettina, and James. Chandler, Alex, and James. Bettina, Alex, and James. Bettina, Chandler, and James. Tina, James, and Alex. Let's go. We're going to list all, all the possibilities. Bettina, uh, Alex, and Chandler. Okay, how, I'm missing one up here. I missed one here. Chandler, um, James, and Alex. Well, J A and A J are the same. I know, but we're saying the order matters. We're pulling it out of a hat. Okay. Now we're going to say that we've got Alex, James. Chandler, Alex, Chandler, James, Alex, Bettina, Chandler, Alex, Chandler, Bettina, James, Chandler, Bettina, James, Bettina, Chandler, James, Alex, Bettina, James, Bettina, Alex. Did I get it wrong? Oh, Miss Ilti. I think I have four, 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 right? Is there anything I'm missing? Okay. All right, I've got my sample space now. We're assuming that order matters. 
let's see here. What's the probability that Bettina goes? We just go circle all the bees, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. 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 Twelve out of sixteen, right? Which equals three fourths. That's pretty good. What's the probability that, let's look a different color here, Alex and Chandler go? Okay, now I've got Alex and Chandler, Alex and Chandler, Chandler and Alex, um, Alex and Chandler. Alex and Chandler, Alex and Chandler, Alex and Chandler, right? You see how easy this is if you've got your sample space? So now I just have to count the greens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Oh, there's one more, eight. Eight out of 16, which is one half. Okay. You see how useful this is? Um, all right. Okay, so another term that I want to mention is we can get a sampling distribution or a density curve. Okay. These these are the values of repeated samples. And how often it takes these values. Okay. Often these can be simulated to look like a normal curve if the sample is large enough. Okay? Now, what is large enough? Okay? The law of large numbers. I'm going to give you two definitions for the law of large numbers. Okay? The easy definition is why the casino always wins and you don't. Because they understand the law of large numbers and they always put it in their favor. Okay? When you go to Las Vegas and they say our slots pay 96 cents out of a dollar, they just told you their profit margin is 4%. Okay? Or 97 cents, it's a 3% profit margin. Okay? Um, but the better definition is as the number 
of repetitions increases the observed gets closer to the theoretical. Okay. Now I'm going to do an example here in just a minute. I do. I want to finish up my board work and then we'll go to the computer to do a little simulation here. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about. I can't believe I lost both of my markers. There's one there and one there. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I feel like a cripple practically. All right. Um, which is more probable? Okay, let's say I flipped a coin six times. And one time I got heads, tails, Heads, tails, tails, heads. Okay? And then another time I flipped it and I got tails, 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 heads, heads, heads. Okay? If we call this option number one, this is option number two. Who says that option number one is more probable? Nobody? Who says option number two is more probable? One? Who says they're equally probable? Two? Who didn't raise your hand? Who still hasn't raised their hand? <laughs> I can vote for number one. Okay. These are equally likely. Okay. This refers to something as the myth of randomness. Which basically says that humans suck at probability. The problem is we see something like this and we say, oh, there's a pattern there. That cannot be random. But it is. We see this and we say, oh, well, that doesn't look like a pattern. That must be more random. No, those are equal, those happen equally. They're equally likely to happen. Okay? So just to prove this, let me tell you a couple of stories. Okay? In 1986, Ellen Marie Adams won the New Jersey lottery for the second time. It's not right, is it? Okay, the New York Times stated that the odds of winning twice were 1 in 17 trillion. Sounds like a pretty rare event, right? Two statistics professors said the odds of winning twice is tiny, but it is almost certain that someone will win twice. And they estimated that the probability of someone winning twice was 50% over the next seven years. Kind of high, isn't it? Two years later, Robert Humphreys won his second jackpot. Okay? Now, there's actually a hidden brain episode, I should post that, that says the more, the, let's see, if you win the lottery, you are more likely to win a second lottery than someone else because you got money to learn now, right? You can keep playing. And there's somebody who's won several times. I'll have to post that. By the way, did anybody see my Freakonomics post last night that I posted? Update on the abortion and crime issue. He's actually done more research on that. Just posted it yesterday, so you should check that out. Not this morning, but I did some more But, uh, well, it's a listen. You can't watch it. It's a listen one. It's an audio only. But the hidden brain, I'll see if I can post that one that talks about the people winning the lottery multiple times. Um, let me ask you this. If a family has four girls in a row, does the quote unquote law of averages mean the probability of a boy is higher for the fifth child? Yes. 
Yeah. No, nope, still 50%. Okay. All right. So um, let me do one more thing. Let's say that I was to flip a coin three times. What is the sample space? What do you think, Alex? So you have, you have to go through and you'd have heads, heads, heads. Heads, heads, heads. And then heads, heads, tails. And then heads, tails, tails. How, how about we go heads, tails, heads? Okay, if you do these in order, then you're going to get them all right. This is move tail, tail, head, head. Tail, head, tail. Tail, head, tail. Tail, okay, head, head, tail, tail, and tail, tail, head, and then head, head, head. You already have the. Sorry, tail, tail, tail. That's what I meant. Why did you put an H T T in there? T H H tail. So we've moved the tail in different spots. We've moved the head in different spots. Okay. Now, before we calculate this, do you think the probability of zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads, and four heads are the same? Because okay. heads and tails are equally likely, right? So all those should be equally likely. Is that true? Except for the last one. There's the last one, zero. Okay. Probability of zero heads, three tails, is one out of. I'm going to go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, if you can count, you should be able to do this. Okay? <laughs> Probability of one head. One head is these three here, right? How many times can I get one head? Three out of eight. How can I get two heads? Two heads are right here, right? Also three out of eight. Probability of three heads. One out of eight. Probability of four heads. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Didn't mean to put that one on there. Got carried away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, what does that add up to? Eight out of eight, right? So does, is that a legitimate probability distribution? Are you surprised that these numbers are not the same as those? Okay. Now, just for fun, let's do a simulation of heads and tails on our computer. Let me open up Excel here. And here's how we're going to do our quick simulation. Okay. If we had more time, I'd actually have somebody flip a coin three times and count the number of heads a bunch of times, but we've only got five minutes left, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use equals rand between zero and one. Uh, rand between zero and one. Oh, we're not showing you guys on the screen, are we? I forgot that was mine. And you guys didn't tell me, so. Hopefully this has been working the whole time. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this over into column three. Look, I got three heads in a row. Well, you can't see yet. Okay. But I'm going to repeat this. Say I can't see this. I'm going to go down 100 rows. We're going to do three. We're basically, we're flipping a coin. Three hundred times. Okay. Now, of course, you will notice that if I type on here, these numbers keep changing, right? That's kind of annoying. Remember how to fix that? Nope, not with the F4. Oh, sure. Highlight all three columns. Copy them. 
A special, click on the one, two, three. Okay, now when I type, it won't change. Okay. Now, because I use zeros and ones, okay, all I need to do is I say, give me the sum of each line, and it will tell me the number of heads. Okay. So on the first row, I got two heads. I'm going to copy that down 100 times. Okay. Now, here's what's cool. Okay. I am going to sort these random numbers, but I'm going to sort by column E. If you click E first, and then we're going to sort A to Z. Okay. So do you guys remember how to make a probability histogram? No. That was on the last test, and you flushed it from your brain? Okay, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to group our data, right? What is my sample space? How many possible heads can I get in three coin flips? Zero or one or two or three. There's no other possibility, rather. Can't get more than three heads out of three flips. Okay. And now we're going to do a frequency distribution. You know how to do that, Sandra? Um, I think what? I don't remember how to do that. Do you remember Dalton? Frequency distribution? Yeah. That was also on the last uh, test and it's been flushed from your brain? Bettina remembers. But I'm watching and I'll read it. Chandler remembers. Oh my gosh. Like how many you guys, numbers? I don't care what score you got, you just failed exam one. So frequency is like how many times in each column that exam? There, how many times? How many zeros do I have? All I got to do is I got to, if I highlight all of my zeros, and I look down here and it says count. Oh, I have yeah, 19. Okay. Yeah. Oh, is that the frequency? 19 <laughs> zeros, right? How many oh. ones do I have? I'm going to highlight all of my ones. Nobody listens. nobody listens to me. That's true. I've got 35 ones. And uh, how many twos do I have? See, and they say you don't have as much time to forget either. That was just last week. I've got 31 twos <laughs> and threes. How many threes do I have? Oops, yeah, I, I counted that right. Yeah, 15. Okay. So, how many? If if this was a true probability. Well, let's, let's do a relative frequency. Let's see if you guys uh, fail this. Is the percentage. So it's the percentage. So how do I figure out the percentage? So you do 19 divided by, is it 100? How many times? Yeah, we should have 100. Hopefully, if I counted correctly, I have 100 here. Uh, how do I do that? At home, and if I click on auto sum, ooh, I counted correctly. So 19 divided by 100. So 19 divided by 100. <laughs> We're going to copy this down. Oops, why didn't it work? Because I forgot to ask for. Now, what's the theoretical? Well, I put that on the board, right? One out of eight. Percentage wise, I should have gotten one out of eight. Right? So I got more zeros than I would have expected, right? But, and this one should be 3 out of 8, and this one should be 3 out of 8, and this should be 1 out of 8. Okay. Now, do you remember how to make that histo a probability histogram? 
Okay, then go to the charts. Well, so you know what? I, I don't want this in the, this is in the way, right? So when you say select your data, that's a little trickier because I want to graph this and I want to graph that. So if you highlight this, hold the control key down, and then do that. Okay. Insert. Insert, do the bar graph. Bar graph. 2D bar. And then you have to like. Why do I have blue and red? Why do I have blue and red? And by the way, it's supposed to be 0, 1, 2, 3, not 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, how do you change that? How do you change that? Because when this happens on your test, you can write me a note and say, I know what it's supposed to be. How do you fix that? Because huh? I need it to say zero, but it doesn't say it, it says one. Who remembers? That's a clue. Apostrophe. Apostrophe. Well, you got to speak up. Can't hear you when you whisper. So the apostrophe. Now highlight this. Highlight that. Insert. Uh, what? Are we going to review that last test together? We'll do it on Tuesday. How's that? When we do our regular review, we do a quick review of the test. Okay. Insert. Two D column. Quick layout, boom. These are number of heads. And this is probability. And I know we're out of time, so that's why I'm hurrying. And this is three tosses of a coin. Okay? Now, this, the interesting thing would be to compare this with the theoretical. I'll do that super quick. Insert, boom, boom, quick layout. These are number of heads and probability. So, really quickly, do you think that those are, that was my experiment close to the theoretical? If I did it closer to a thousand times, this would, instead of a hundred times, it would look more like this, but it would a thousand times. So that would illustrate the law of large numbers. Okay? So yes, there's going to be some natural variation, but we definitely got a symmetric graph here, and this one is roughly symmetric, right? It's got natural variation. All right, quiz on Monday, chapter 12. On Monday, we will review. We will do chapter 15, and then we'll do our test Tuesday or our review Tuesday. Well, we take the test Tuesday after Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. And our test in class is Wednesday. Test in class is Wednesday in our regular. So Monday we're going to meet in our regular class. Yeah. Any other thing about Saturday and the Monday class? Yeah. Yeah.